dates back to the American Civil War when it was named Decoration Day. I still remember my parents referring to it as Decoration Day at times. And the idea was you decorated the graves. It was a time, it started as an event to decorate those graves to honor those soldiers who died during the Civil War. The original one took place on May 30th, 1868. And then fast forward to the late 19th century and it was changed to be Memorial Day and expanded to include all the veterans of all the wars. We celebrate that today. It's been memorialized as the last Monday in May. We celebrate here today for that day that is tomorrow. And want to say a special word of honor and thank you to the many of you in our congregation today and those of you who are watching uh, for serving our country. We not only are paying tribute to those who have died in the service of the country, but we want to give honor and tribute to those who have served and praise God you didn't die there. Uh, we, we are grateful for that. So today we are very honored as a part of our uh, congregation, Larry Hagelin, who is served in the U.S. Army and served in Vietnam and has been part of the American Legion and is part of the Honor Guard over at the Veterans Cemetery in Sturgis for the last numbers of years. And he is, in, he is here today to present the colors for us. So I want you to stand, gentlemen, remove cover, and we will stand as the American flag comes to us. be seated. Just a heads up, at the end of our teaching time today, at the end of our service, Larry's going to come again and retire those colors, and so I'll ask you again to stand in honor and respect. Part of Western culture, part of cowboy culture, is honoring our patriotism, our flag, and our country, and we're grateful for what God has given to us. And uh, thanks again sincerely to all of you who have served. Thank you, Larry, for your service and your service that's ongoing for us in this. God bless America. Amen. <laughs> and now let's go to church. Let's talk about the fact that we are going uh, back in the book of Luke in chapter 15 and it is the lost and found department of the Bible and if you'll recall we had a couple of interruptions so it's been a few weeks here but, but we talked about the lost sheep and the shepherd that went after the lost sheep and threw a party. 
we talked about the lost coin and the woman who swept, turned the light on and swept diligently until she found the coin and had a party. Now we've talked about the lost sons and look at that title, title I just sort of came up with, but the lost sons, not just son, and the prodigal father. And again, I will say, I, I, I got that idea started from, from, from that word from a Tim Killer who, who wrote the book, The Prodigal God, and it's an absolutely astounding book, and, and I highly recommend it to you. Um, um, but The Prodigal Father, let me explain that just a little bit because they already sang it a little bit. They just sang, one of the last songs I believe it was, was the reckless love of God. You heard that? Hmm, that's interesting. Calling God reckless? Huh. Ladies, gentlemen, I, I, that may be a little sacrilegious. No, it's, no, it's spot on actually. And that's exactly what this term prodigal meant. Last week we talked about the prodigal son number one, and he's the one that sort of got the name started because prodigal actually means over the top, extravagant excessive and in his case he was selfish impatient he turned out to be wanton wasteful and wicked and blew it all of the mar marvelous gifts that he'd been given he just blew it he just had the wrong priorities he just didn't value the right things and he was prodigal and we've come to associate that word with just wasteful and wanton and wickedness but he came to his senses. Ah, what a key word. I don't know about you, but I've been praying for a few people I know this week. God, help him, her to come to their senses. Actually, there's a couple of you I've been praying that for. So wake up. Hope you had coffee. I'm just saying, come on. You can feel free to pray that for me every once in a while. Come to my senses, right? I mean, sometimes you just need to say, get a clue. He got a clue. He, he was at the bottom. He got a clue and said, this is crazy. This is nuts. I'm starving to death, feeding pigs, and can't eat as good as the pigs. I'm going home. And I'm going to admit that I'm not worthy, but I'm not worthless. I can still do something, and God received him. That's where we have the prodigal father. Because the father, did. he was excessive. He was extravagant, which led to grace and generosity that was reckless love, reckless love. So thanks for that song again. It was, it's just such an amazing, captures this picture of a God who's a prodigal God. Now, now this week, we're going to get to son number two. And you, you probably don't remember this, but a couple of weeks ago I said, now, you're, you're, going, to, you're going to tend to relate to one of these sons or the other. <laughs> and some of you have already told me last week you related to that guy. Oh, boy, been there, done that. Mm. Or know somebody. Right now, current, front burner. Been there, done that. Here's the good news. I hope that was a message of hope to say, no matter how far you go, no matter how low you sink, no matter where that is, there's a father who's watching for you, waiting for you, longing for you, and will receive you back full. Gave him the family debit card and said, you're in, man. You're all the way back. You're my son. I receive you with love. That's reckless love of God. Now, today we're going to talk about son number two. And some of you may more relate to him. He, well, let's, let's, let's see. It's possible, by the way, to relate to both of them. Let me just give you a heads up. It's possible to have been son number one and got it all wrong but eventually turn around and by the grace of God get it right and then become son number two. That's possible. Let's look. Let's see. Let's read the scripture. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. So you understand, the younger son's come back. The father's embraced him. And, and as I said to the beef, beef producers, uh, they had prime beef to celebrate. They, 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 they didn't have chicken or, or lamb. They had prime beef. And, and so they had this party, and, and the noise in the house, it was great. The older son, by the way, uh, I'll get to him, but let's read the story. But I'm just telling you, he, he's, that's the context of this. The older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf 
because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. My son, the father said, you're always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So I'll follow the same format we did last week and let's go back and just talk about the son for a little. This is son number two and there's some stuff about him you're going to really like. And there's some stuff about him you're going to go, uh-oh. And the question I'm going to ask you and me is, uh, did you bring a mirror? I hope, hope you didn't, actually. But think about one. Uh, is there stuff about this guy that I really want to be like? And there's stuff, uh-oh. I could do that. I could go there. So, so let's, let's look at this son. So go back to that story. So... This is, the whole, this is the whole setup. There are these two sons. The younger one says, Father, give me my share. And he divided his property between them. Let's go to the next verse, please. So the older son's in the field. He comes into the house. Oh, this is, whoa, 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 stop right there. Here's a guy, here, the older son, he's a hard worker. Good. He, 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 he's, this is a farm estate, big farm estate. He's doing, he's doing the work of the estate, the work of the, the farm. He's been faithful at doing this now. He, he's, he's a faithful hard worker. He's, he's doing that. He's doing his work. He's doing his job. We like that. We like that. I like, I like people at work. I like people to do their job. I like people to get out in the field. This is, this is a good thing, right? So, so he was out there. He comes near the house. And, and oh, by the way, it's, it's, we, we would assume now it's sort of evening time. So he's probably working a little overtime, working a little hard. I just got to tell you, it maybe just because I'm old, but I like that. Yep, yep. You don't, don't, don't have to quit at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock. You, you, I like that. Wait, wait a minute. And, and, and you're going to hear some more. But, but he hears this music and dancing. Now, you may or may not like what I'm about to say. This is a guy who's a hard worker, and he doesn't party. We're going to see later. He says, I never even had a goat let alone prime beef. I didn't have goat. I'm not a big fan of goat personally, so if you are, write your letters to Rachel. But I'm just saying, uh, 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 just, just, he, he's, this is not a party animal. He, he's, he's, he's out there working. He hears, hears music and dancing. It's, so he calls one of the servants and says, what's, what's, what's going on? What's up? Why, 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 we don't have a lot of parties. What's up? What's going on? Let's go to the next one. Your brother's come, he replied. Your See, right there. Your brother's come. Even the servant probably thought this was really good news. Your brother's come. Just say that word. Just think of it slowly. Your brother has come. Ah, your family that was ripped up and torn apart. Your family's being restored. Ah. Now, see, I'm... I've been observing a lot of people for a lot of years, and I understand that that sounds really nice and mellow, but I know that's really hard for some of you to hear. <laughs> so some of you, I, I get that. It's okay. it's okay. You can be honest. Sometimes your brother's here is not good news. Sometimes your dad's here, not good news. Sometimes even your mom's here, not good news. That's rare, but I'm just saying, it's possible, theoretically. Lots of times your cousin's here is not good news. So you, see, you see what I'm saying? This, this can bring great joy. It sounds warm and cuddly. Your brother has come. But there's, wait a minute, this, that brother. You're talking about the brother who made my dad divide up inheritance ahead of time and then who went and blew it. He, he's going to specify this. He... he you're talking to that brother. And, and you said that like you thought I'd be happy. 
Now I'm starting to talk about me and you. Did you get that? Not just about him. See, see, see there's, there's times when this upright brother who works in the field and works hard and stays with the stuff is the uptight brother who says that because everybody else hasn't played by the same set of rules and done the same sort of thing, they don't deserve joy or mercy. My, here, just, just an observation. It seems like to me the people who are the hardest working people have the hardest times with the people who aren't. What do you think? Seems like the people who really play by the rules, they make me nervous. If you never go one mile over the speed limit, you make me nervous. I've just got to tell you, get to know me at a distance, not any closer. Are, are you with me? Seriously, I mean, come on. The people who dot the I's and cross all the T's, on one hand, I want that guy as my accountant. See, uh, probably a good neighbor except, oh boy, you, you, you understand there's a line here between being reckless and prodigal and stupid and being so uptight that you have no grace and mercy and tolerance. Hello? So I'm speaking to a cowboy audience mostly, you know, or at least you like it, and, and we tend to be conservative and we tend to be hardworking and we tend to be somewhat frugal and we tend to be, oh, uh, guess what that makes us in, I'm, here's, here, let me just say this honestly. I've been part of churches all my life. This is the church that has the least amount of older brothers of any church I've ever seen ever in my life, ever. Thank you, God bless you, and keep it up. But some of us are in danger. Some of us are in danger of saying, just because I've worked hard and done this, I hold everybody else to the same standard and I have no tolerance for people who weren't. Oh boy, let's, uh, I better get back to the scripture, right? Uh, let, let, let's go. He said, your brother's come. That's supposed to be warm and fuzzy. It wasn't. And your father's killed the fattened calf because he ain't back safe and sound. See, all this is good. The servant thinks this is good news. The older brother became angry and refused to go in, not being part of that. Check me out. I am ticked off. So his father, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. We're going to get back to the father in a minute, but, but watch this. Here's an early on. Here's this prodigal father. Here's this extravagant father. Here's this father who could have said, you don't want to party? Go back to work, son. Field's not done. It's still out there. Work all night. I don't care. No, no, no. His father went out to him. Here's a key factor for us to know is that the father not only saw the, the bad son coming and ran to meet him, he sees the good son being bad and goes out to meet him too. Draw a deep breath. <sighs> Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Here's the shepherd that goes after the one sheep that was lost. Here's the father that says, I love you when you're being reckless and wasteful and wanton and silly and sinful. I love you and I welcome you home. Here's the father that says when you're being self-righteous and uptight and harsh and angry, I love you too. Understand, Jesus is saying this to a group of Pharisees who are older brothers. They're the upright, uptight audience. And they've been muttering, saying, this is Jesus. He hangs out with sinners. He even eats with them. One of the best compliments Jesus ever got. And they're saying, this is the guy. And Jesus said, let me tell you a story. And this is kind of where this story's headed. Because he's in a room full of older brothers. Not like you now. No, no. We just got three in this room. No, no. I don't even think any, but I'm just saying. But by the way, see, I, I mentioned I've been around church all my life. See, I'm in prime danger for this because I know all the rules and follow most of them. Right? You can trust me with your life, your wife, and your wallet. They'll all be safe with me. Guarantee you that by the grace of God. I'm pretty proud of that. That's the problem. I can be too proud of that. Hello? 
And then when I run into somebody who's not trustworthy, guess what? I can look down on them pretty harshly. Hello? There's lots of you in this room. I just say, yeah, whatever, take it. You're good. Tell me when you're done. And I'd, I'd, I'd feel totally trusting, totally, totally comfortable with that. Here, Larry. Have it. Thanks. See, see, I'm good. Now, right after church, we need to talk. But, uh, uh, but, but <laughs> Lynette, watch him. Uh, but, but, but you see what I'm saying? We're all good for that. Which makes Larry then a target. Here's a guy in uniform today. Makes him a target to become an older brother if you're not careful. Does that, does that make sense? Because you, because you see, because we play with the rules, we get, we take the rules too seriously. Does that, does that make sense? That's that's exactly what this guy did. He became angry, so his father went out and played this. Let's go on. But he answered, Father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours who squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. So let's go to the father and let's read about him. We already did a little, but but watch what the father says. This is this is to the good son who is too proud and too arrogant. Watch what he says to him. Son, I just told you we had this brother that was lost and is found. He's dead and he's alive. He was gone. He's back. Son, you're always with me. (sighs) Wow. Son, you're always here. We're together. We got that. See, see, when I I start this list, here's, here's the deal. When I see somebody else being given a lot, I sometimes forget how much I have. Anybody? Especially when I see somebody else being given a lot when they don't deserve it. That bites. Are you with me? I mean, I see somebody really works hard, really does something, and they get it. Yep, that's fair. That works out. But somebody just sort of, they're, I won't say it here, you know, it's being recorded, but you know, that guy. And still it just falls in his lap. And I'm thinking, not right. Hello? Because come on, man, I've worked hard. I don't get breaks like that. Hello? Am I reminding you of anybody you know? Have you ever thought this stuff? See, see, that's what this son, but, but the father's reminding him, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't worry about what he's getting. Consider this. You always have me. We're always together. Wow. Wow. And watch this. And everything I have is yours, the father says. Think about that a minute. You're a child of God. Think about that. God says to you and to me, everything I have is yours. Wow. (laughs) Way cool. Everything I have is yours. quit, quit, Quit working so hard to try to prove something. I got you. I am the Lord God most high. I'm the sovereign of the whole universe. I own every hill and everything in it and on it. You inherit all that. I got you. I didn't didn't tell you to quit working. But you may need to throttle back. You may not need to be quite so driven because God says, I got you. Watch this. Everything I have is yours. But then what's, what's, we had to celebrate. <laughs> I'm still not sure I understand that completely. His father said, it's not we should have. It's appropriate. No, he said, we had to. We had to do this. We had to celebrate and be glad because this brother's, brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Let's go on. And, and so you, you, see, you see the father is just caught up in saying, I'm going to come to you now, not because of your wickedness and wantonness, but because of your upright uptightness. I'm not even sure that's a word, but you got it, right? 
<sighs> I'm so grateful to God for his mercy. I'm so glad he's my father. I'm glad he's got reckless love, right? Guys, look at me. He loves you. He knows everything you've ever thought, and he still loves you. I might have a problem with some of the stuff you've thought, but he loves you. And then I need to remember that he loves you, not just me. Wow. He loves people that I think don't do well, that I think make dumb choices. And some of them are smart and make those choices anyway. Those are the people that really tick me off. Hello. And God is saying, but I love them too. Wow. So where, where, where are you? Which brother? Or both? Most of us, I'll, I'll confess, I, I've done the, little, the, the younger brother thing, brother number one, and praise God, he, God took me back and has lavished his love on me. For that, I'm eternally grateful. That's been a long time ago, though. Say, I've been older brother <laughs> quite a while now, working hard in the field, staying late. And if I'm, I don't think I have this attitude. If you do, please talk to me. Take a while, but talk to me. But, but, but I don't want to be this older brother. I don't want to be the guy that looks down and says, you're just pawn scum. And I don't want anything to do with you. I want to know the father who says, I'll go outside for you too. I'll go outside for you too and say, yeah, you're too judgmental. You're too harsh. But I love you. I love you. I love you. So wherever you are, you may not relate to either one of these brothers. Here's still the good news for you. God loves you. He'll come outside for you. He'll meet you. He'll throw a party for you. You may even get prime beef out of the deal. Who knows? God will say, I love you so much that I care for you no matter what. So I would just say to you in your prayers, almost everybody knows somebody who took off and went the wrong way, selfishly and patiently, and they may be in a deep ditch today. Pray that God would help them to come to their senses and start back home and believe that there's a God who loves them and will meet them and restore them. Most of us know somebody who didn't go do the wrong thing, but they're smug and arrogant and judgmental. Pray for them. See, see, the interesting thing is we don't know how the story ends for sure. Jesus doesn't have accidents, by the way. That's not an accident. He didn't run out of ink. He left that open because he's talking to these Pharisees and the story hadn't ended for them. And Jesus wants to say, I'm out here. I came out to plead with you, to tell you, you got it all. Lighten up and party. Come in and celebrate your brother. We don't know if they did or not. So how's that story end with you? How's that end with me? Jesus is saying, thank God for what God has allowed you to do and be. Now be gracious and generous. Be prodigal. Be reckless in loving people who've not had the same path and opportunities you've had. Amen? Amen? That's tough right there. That's tough right there. Here's the problem. God may bump you into one of these brothers or both of them this week and expect you to remember that he loves both of them. Please keep that in mind because he loves you. Amen? Let me pray for you. Holy Father, it is in Jesus' name. We are so grateful. Oh, wow, you're such a wonderful God, a prodigal God, a generous God, a gracious God. You love us, you care for us, you reach us, you really care for us. 
God, we want to be more like you. We want to be the good part of this older brother, diligent and careful, but we don't want to be smug and proud and arrogant. We want to be humble and gracious and realize that you've given us these wonderful good gifts. One of these good gifts you've given us to God is that we get to live in America. And today we want to honor those who have served and those who have died in the preservation of the liberty that we get to do what we're doing right now. Thank you, God, for the freedom of speech we have. Thank you for the ability to vote that we have. Thank you for the freedom of worship that we have. Help us to safeguard those freedoms as treasures. Help us, God, to value them and pray for them. God, we pray for our leaders today. Even those that we don't especially like, we pray for them. And pray that you would give them wisdom and discretion and understanding and direction. We pray for our country today. We pray for our men and women in our armed services, wherever they are in the world today, that you would surround them with your grace and your protection and your love and help them, God, to feel your nearness. We give them that respect today in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now please rise, if you will, and remove cover. Thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. Absurd. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. See ya.